In this unit, we will explain the institution of marriage. We will also explain various aspects connected with it. This will include discussion on forms of marriage. Such forms include monogamy, polygamy and polyandry. We have also described mate selection as an important aspect of marriage. Some of the related areas covered are love marriages, preferential marriages and mate selection practices among tribals. The last part deals with changes in marriage, its forms, mate selection practices, age at marriage and so on. We thus provide a full picture of the institution of marriage. Marriage is an important and universal social institution of society. As a social institution, it provides a recognized form for entering into a relatively enduring heterosexual relationship for the bearing and rearing of children. It is thus primarily a way of regulating human reproduction. This reproduction, however, also has a sociological dimension. The right of sexual relationship that universally accompanies marriage provides legitimization to the children born in wedlock. This legitimacy is of great importance in the matters of inheritance and succession. Besides, through marriage, there comes into existence the family, a relatively stable social group that is responsible for the care and training of children. In all these respects, then, marriage has historically provided the institutional mechanisms necessary for replacement of social members and thereby has been meeting the important prerequisites of human survival and society's continuance. However, these societal prerequisites do not encompass all the values and goals of marriage. In some societies, particularly in the industrialized Western societies, the chief aim of marriage is not only procreation but companionship emotional and psychological support are equally emphasized. The idea of companionship in marriage as a main feature, however, is a recent development. For the major part of human history, all societies have emphasized marriage to be a social obligation. It is invested with several familial, social and economic responsibilities. Historically, marriage has been found to exist in a wide variety of forms in different societies. Also, it has been found to perform differing functions. Indeed, even the manner in which marriage are to be obtained reveals an astonishing variety of modes and customs. There is an almost endless variety in nearly everything concerning marriage. This has led to several definitions of what marriage is. Forms of marriage As has just been pointed out above, marriage has a large variety of forms. These forms can be identified on the basis of the number of partners and rules governing who can marry whom. In terms of the number of partners, 
that can legitimately enter into matrimony, we have two forms of marriage, namely monogamy and polygamy. Monogamy. Monogamy is one of the oldest and ideal forms of marriage. It is a form of marriage in which a man can marry a single woman. A man can marry another lady only when the first wife has either died or has been divorced. Monogamy is a very popular form of marriage. It is prevalent in many societies. It is the most common form of marriage because of its various advantages. It is in monogamy real love between life partners, affection between parents and children can be seen. It brings about a real union of two hearts. In monogamy, woman enjoys equal rights and status. Both husband and wife lead a very happy life. According to Malinowski, monogamy is, has been and will remain the only true type of marriage. In almost all places and times, the sex ratio is equal to one is to one. In such conditions, monogamy is the most suitable form of marriage. Monogamy is prevalent in all societies and is almost the universal form in all modern industrial societies. Even where polygamy is permitted, in actual practice, monogamy is more widely prevalent. Due to constraints of financial resources and almost an even balance between the ratio of men and women in the population, a vast majority of individuals living in polygamous societies cannot have more than one spouse at a time. A society may also practice straight monogamy in which remarriage is not allowed. Most upper caste Hindu females were obliged to follow the norm of straight monogamy prior to the enactment of Widow Remarriage Act of 1856 as until then widows were not allowed to marry again. These restrictions had not, however, pertained to men. They were allowed to remarry after their spouse's death. However, in some lower castes, widow remarriage was permitted. In such a remarriage, usually the deceased husband's brother was considered and a preferred mate. This practice helped keep property within the family. It is also called levirate marriage. Why monogamy? Why are marriages in some societies monogamous while those in others are polygynous? What accounts for the gradual historical shift from polygamy to monogamy in the course of human civilization? What explains the particular form the institution of marriage takes in a given society or a given time in history? Despite the central importance of marriage and the family in sociology, there has been no sociological theory of the institution of marriage that addresses these questions. In the course of history, however, with industrialization and urbanization, households have greatly reduced the demand for quantity of children and correspondingly increased the demand for quality of children. Becker in 1991 notes that since the marginal contribution of men to quality is much greater than to quantity, our analysis predicts correctly that the incidence of polygyny 
has declined substantially over time. In anthropology, Melotti in 1981 notes that there has been a gradual shift over human evolutionary history from promiscuity to polygyny to monogamy. He points out that the average coefficient of relatedness that is the proportion of genes that two individuals share among children of promiscuous unions is smaller than that among children of polygynous unions which in turn is smaller than that among children of monogamous unions. Altruism among children within the monogamous family is therefore evolutionarily more beneficial than altruism among children within the polygynous family because it benefits others who are more closely related to the altruist which in turn is evolutionarily more beneficial than altruism among children of promiscuous unions. Evolutionary theory and evidence also suggests that humans have always had pair bonds, a man and a woman raising their children together, whether monogamously or polygonously. They were therefore never completely promiscuous. The advantages of monogamy. Monogamy can exist with or without marriage and can be practiced by people of heterosexual, homosexual and bisexual sexual orientations. Monogamy is the ideal in most contemporary cultures but other options include promiscuity, sex with multiple partners, open relationships, a monogamous romantic relationship with a promiscuous sexual relationship and polyandry relationship with more than one person at a time. Sexually transmitted diseases. From a health perspective, one of the big advantages of monogamy is the reduced risk for contracting sexually transmitted diseases like HIV, gonorrhea and herpes. There are other ways to get sexually transmitted diseases other than sex such as intravenous drug use in the case of HIV. However, in most cases unless you or your partner previously had an STD, the chances of contracting one are extremely low. Intimacy Intimacy means having a deep personal connection with someone. One advantage of monogamy is that it fosters emotional intimacy between two people allowing them to have a strong affectionate relationship. In a monogamous relationship most people expect the search for a partner to be over and expect to build a solid intimate relationship that will stand the test of time. Couples having sex in a monogamous heterosexual relationship do not get infected by hepatitis C virus a new study has found. Transmission of HCV from an infected partner during sex is rare according to the research. Experts estimate that HCV affects up to 4 million Americans, most of whom are sexually active. Polygamy Polygamy denotes marriage to more than one mate at one time and takes the form of either polygyny, one husband with two or more wives or polyandry, one wife with two or more husbands. While monogamy is permitted in all societies, polygamy in the form of polygyny is the preferred form 
in several societies. Murdoch's research based on an analysis of 283 societies revealed that 193 of these were characterized by polygyny, 43 were monogamous and only two practiced polyandry. Preferential rules for the choice of wives or husbands are followed in some polygamous societies. In certain societies, males marry the wife's sisters and females their husband's brothers. Such marriages are termed as sororal polygyny and fraternal polyandry. Among polyandrous societies, fraternal polyandry is by far the most common. These societies, a group of brothers, real or classificatory, are collectively the husbands of a woman. This kind of polyandry has been found by the researchers in various parts of the world. Tibet has been described as the largest and most flourishing polyandrous community by Prince Peter. Polyandry is reported to be widely prevalent among some tribes in South India. Todas are considered a classic example of polyandrous people. In North India, some groups of Jats are reported to be polyandrous. Polygamy according to Islam Islam is a religion which acknowledges various human needs and desires to live in pairs. Based on this condition, Islam allows polygamy to be practiced which has also been the practice of hereditary societies since before the arrival of Islam. In order to ensure that the practice of polygamy is carried out fairly and to provide harmony to the Ummah, Islam has laid down certain conditions which restrict the free practice previously and take a more reasonable fair solution. Islamic law stipulates that a man may marry more than one woman but not more than four. Polygamy is only neutral and it is a ruksha, which means relief in an emergency situation. According to him, although the language used in the surha above has the elements of an order, it does not translate to obligatory. Furthermore, it looked at carefully, it can also mean as a prohibition and it is in fact haram or it's prohibited for the polygamous husband if he is incapable of being fair and causes a potential abuse to the wife he married. Polygamy in the Islamic family laws in Malaysia. In the Islamic family laws in Malaysia, polygamy is allowed with the condition that the husband has already received a written permission from the Syriad court. This is a provision in the section 23.1 Islamic Family Laws Act, Federal Territories in 1984. According to section 23.3, Aki 1984, the husband's application to be polygamous must be submitted to the court within the stimulated procedure and accompanied with a confession. The confession must contain the reasons why the polygamous marriage is a must and necessary, the husband's financial condition containing the details of his commitments and financial responsibilities and duties which have to be determined as well as the number of dependents including the person whom he will be supporting by means of the new marriage as proposed. Other than that, the applicant must also state whether or not his wife 
or wife's opinions have been acquired with regards to the marriage. The court will provide fair judgment based on the four conditions for polygamy as provisioned under Section 23.4 or Key 1984 which include the proposed marriage is a necessity judging from the wife's condition including infertility, physical illness, physically not eligible for sexual intercourse, disobedient to the rights for sexual intercourse or insanity. The applicant possesses the capabilities according to the CIRAC to provide for all wives and the dependents including the person that he will be supporting from the new marriage. The applicant is capable of providing fair and equal treatment to all wives as required by CIRAC. The proposed marriage will not cause danger or harm to the wife. However, the number of men who enter into the polygamous marriages without the court's consensus keeps on increasing and is more in number compared to polygamous marriages conducted according to the Syria court's procedures. The latest example can be seen from the marriage between Datuk Nuridan's PE and Siti Insaya Abdul Wahab which was conducted in Thailand as reported in Haryan Metro dated 20th March 2006. The couple was originally scheduled to get married in Padang Siraya, Kedha, but failed to obtain consensus from the religious officer, Kulim district, due to failure of submitting the necessary documents required for polygamous marriage application. The problem is, more issues will arise later after the marriage takes place but not registered and endorsed by the court. Amongst the issues that will arise later include the indecisive status of the young wife and children. The situation will be made worse when the husband passes away which will make them unable to claim any inheritance due to insufficient documentation as proof of the marriage. Other problems that may arise include the husband's inability to perform his duties as required. As an example, the young wife may only meet her polygamous husband in secret once a week or once a month. This, in the end, will influence the emotional development of the wife and children because they will feel that their lives are different from other normal people and might lead to social problems. In order to protect the wife from becoming a victim of the husband's injustice, the laws via section 128, Aki 1984, has provisioned that a husband who is not being fair to his wife has committed an offence and is liable for a fine of not exceeding 1000 ringgit or jail sentence not exceeding 6 months or both. This provision in accordance with the teachings of Islam which emphasizes on the importance of protection for women from the malpractice of the otherwise halal polygamy. This emphasis should be done so that the husband will become as fair as possible to the wife. Monogamy reduces major social problems of polygamist cultures. In cultures that permit men to take multiple wives, the intrasexual competition that occurs causes greater levels of crime, violence, poverty and gender inequality 
than in societies that institutionalize and practice monogamous marriage. That is a key finding of a new university of British Columbia led study that explores the global rise of monogamous marriage as a dominant cultural institution. The study suggests that institutionalized monogamous marriage is rapidly replacing polygamy because it has lower levels of inherent social problems. Our goal was to understand why monogamous marriage has become standard in most developed nations in recent centuries when most recorded cultures have practiced polygamy, says UBC Professor Joseph Hendrich, a cultural anthropologist referring to the form of polygamy that permits multiple wives which continues to be practiced in some parts of Africa, Asia, the Middle East and North America. The emergence of monogamous marriage is also puzzling for some as the very people who most benefit from polygyny, wealthy, powerful men were best positioned to reject it, says Henrich, lead author of the study that is published today in the journal Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society. Our findings suggest that the institutionalized monogamous marriage provides greater net benefits for society at large by reducing social problems that are inherent in polygynous societies. Considered the most comprehensive study of polygamy and the institution of marriage, the study finds significantly higher levels of rape, kidnapping, murder, assault, robbery and fraud in polygynous cultures. According to Henrich and his research team, which included professors Robert Boyd, UCLA and Peter Richardson, UC Davis, these crimes are caused primarily by pools of unmarried men which result when other men take multiple wives. The scarcity of marriageable women in polygamous cultures increases competition among men for the remaining unmarried women, says Henrich, adding that polygamy was outlawed in 1963 in Nepal, 1955 in India, partially, 1953 in China and 1880 in Japan. The greater competition increases the likelihood men in polygamous communities will resort to criminal behavior to gain resources and women, he says. According to Henrich, monogamy's main cultural evolutionary advantage over polygyny is the more egalitarian distribution of women, which reduces male competition and social problems. Monogamy's institutionalization has been assisted by its incorporation by religions such as Christianity. Monogamous marriage also results in significant improvements in child welfare, including lower rates of child neglect, abuse, accidental death, homicide and intra-household conflict, the study finds. These benefits result from greater levels of parental investment, smaller households and increased direct blood relatedness in monogamous family households, says Enrich, who served as an expert witness for British Columbia's Supreme Court case involving the polygamous community of Bountiful, BC. Monogamous marriage has largely preceded democracy and voting rights for women in the nations 
where it has been institutionalized, says Henrich, the Canadian Research Chair in Culture, Cognition and Evolution in UBC's Department of Psychology and Economics. By decreasing competition for younger and younger brides, monogamous marriage increases the age of first marriage for females, decreases the spousal age gap and elevates female influence in household decisions which decreases total fertility and increases gender equality. In this unit, various practices related to the institution of marriage were discussed. We have presented the institution and forms of marriage early in the unit. These indicate the wide differences in marriage practices and procedures. Our discussions on mate selection indicate that society and social rules are based upon different aspects of marriage. In many cases, marriage happens within a very narrow choice. Finally, we have indicated how marriage as an institution has been changing. This shows that marriage itself is a dynamic institution always undergoing modification.